All right, welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. This time around, we're moving away from uh, security matters, and we're talking about education, specifically uh, how uh, you can get um, quality education in the UK with a uh, UK boarding schools exhibition uh, going on here in Lagos uh, today. Uh, we have uh, two people, uh, a beautiful lady and a gentleman, joining us this morning. Uh, let's make welcome Natasha Dangerfield. Thank you very much. It is our pleasure. And, of course, George Budd, thanks for joining us on the show. Okay, let's talk about, uh, first of all, I welcome you both to Nigeria. How are you finding Lagos so far? Noisy. It's wonderful. Wonderfully noisy. Uh, wonderfully noisy. That's a first. That's a good one. George, how's your experience been so far in Lagos? I think very colourful and very, mm. very, uh, very vibrant. We're delighted to be here. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, our pleasure yeah. to host you in Nigeria. But let's just get straight to the, the, the issue for today, education in the UK. There are, I must say, great schools uh, in Lagos. So, so what, what's uh, the advantage of get, getting an education in the United Kingdom? Natasha. I think in a similar way to in the United Kingdom, there are, there are immense choices, um, and I think choice is the key word. Uh, we have an option. Some families are fortunate to have an option to make a choice, and sending to the UK, particularly from, from Nigeria, allows people to possibly access the senior education in, in universities. We have a lot of our students that come across from Nigeria who are looking to access the British university system. And I think this gives them a great footstep into that. All right, so let me talk to you now, Georgia. What would you say is uh, the remark and difference? Uh, what is the main reason as a parent why I would want my children to school in the UK? I think, as, as Natasha says, partly it's looking further ahead to university. And I think families in Nigeria recognise that A-levels um, done in Britain are a really good way to access a British university. So I think it's in some ways it's less about the school and more about higher education and university. And I know the vast majority of um, Nigerians will then return will return home once they've done their once they've done their degree. Um, I think also it's about who you meet, contacts, networks, and life experiences of growing up with people from all over the world. We have students from over 20 different countries at my school. And I think it's a fantastic way of, of understanding cultural literacy and getting a foothold into the world of business, where you're going to be doing business with people from all over the world. Oh. I'm glad you mentioned um, the issue of um, cultural... Uh, uh, OK, fine, because uh, most people have this issue of um, cultural shock. Let's talk about adapting and settling down. You know? So how has it really been like you know, for students um, from specifically Nigeria and um, uh, West Africa, per se? Um, how's, it, how's the experience been like in terms of settling down when they get to the UK for schooling? Natasha. I think initially there, there are three things that we have to be careful with with oh. children, uh, children of any culture. Uh, okay. The first thing is feeding them uh -huh. uh, because food is a really important part. Yes, it is. Isn't it? And this is and particularly for um, African students that really feel the need to make sure that this is the focal part of their day. This is where they come to be with family normally. But the friendships that they create in, uh, in boarding environments mean that they have this great array of friendships around the food, but making sure the food is right and supporting them in, in making healthy choices with that. But allowing them to have access still to be able to contact parents is important, but also making sure the foundation of those staff that support them, the boarding schools in the UK, are phenomenal at pastoral care, yeah. making sure that they know who they can talk to, who they can ground with. So uh, just making sure they know who to talk to in the school, where they can get in touch with their parents and when and then understanding the routines, but making sure that focus is around how they eat and eating well. All right, George, George let's talk about, uh, I want you to give us maybe a bit of an instance how a student from Nigeria has actually thrived and adapted mm. to UK schools. Of course. Um, I could give an example from 1953, which is yeah. when our first Nigerian people came to the school. That's a while uh, it is a long time ago. We've <laughs> yeah. worked, we worked with, uh, with Nigeria for many, many years. Um, I'm actually going to give an example of a girl who just joined our lower sixth. So she's come over to us to do her A-levels. And she is the youngest of three siblings. Her brothers are both, uh, sorry, her brother and her sister are both at university in the US. So she's very, uh, from a very globally looking, outward looking um, family. And she has, has been really welcomed into, into the sixth form, into the boarding house. Um, she's made some cracking friends. And I think that the sociability and the affability of, uh, of people from Nigeria, I think, has served her extremely well in, in making those connections. And also, the, the school is a place where uh, where people join at any stage of their education. So we're quite used to welcoming people um, into, into, the, into the school who haven't been there from, from the beginning. Mm. And it, it's always been that home from home, a real family feel. And that comes actually from the students and the girls 
um, we're a girls' school in the sixth form. It comes from the girls as much as it does from the staff. Mm. And I think the, the, the peer support that the girls offer one another, particularly over the last couple of years through COVID, shows that they are, they're so welcoming. And yeah. you know, I think that you, you get back what you put in, and we certainly find that our Nigerian girls, they, mm. they, they put in a lot. All right, Natasha, I understand there is an exhibition uh, today in Lagos. Can you tell us more about it in terms of what to expect and uh, sponsors and all of that? Of course. So we're at the Wheat Baker Hotel from 11 till 4 today. Uh, the sponsors were supported, hugely supported by the High Commission, British High Commission and the DIT alongside Mark Brooks Education and Anderson Education. And they facilitated an opportunity to bring a number of schools together. We are here to represent our various differences and we have a diverse range of schools um, here for, for parents to come and talk to. But the idea really is for you just to come and have those conversations, see what options there are, see if anything suits, or simply just to hear a little bit more about what education is like in the UK. So is it, um, George, is it uh, thrown to the members of the public? You could just walk in and walk in, or how does it really work? Absolutely. So we're in the Wheat Baker Hotel, and the exhibition is 11 a.m. until 4 p.m. today. And we're there to talk about uh, British education um, for, for the children, and also to meet school leaders, to talk possibly about partnerships. I've had some great conversations with head teachers and school proprietors um, in Abuja earlier in the week about our teacher training partnerships, how we might work together there, whether we can offer seminars for the schools, yeah. and indeed what we can what we can learn in return. And so we, we'd love to welcome families, parents, children, and also school school leaders too. Yeah. So Natasha, in case uh, one or parent uh, just need to get more information, how do they just go about uh, getting that information? You know, in case that they have made decisions, you know, to send just children to the UK for schooling. Of course, Mark Brooks Education. Uh, that if you pop that straight into the Google handle, he has a website that will facilitate that conversation in the first stages and then connect us um, accordingly. So depending yeah. on your wishes as a, as a parent. Okay. Uh, shared education, shared experiences. How do mm. we ensure that uh, what has been learned and been taught from the UK is actually brought to bear, uh, not just to Nigeria, but of course uh, the sub-region in West Africa? George. Yeah, of course. So I think that, that plays into the, the students going home once yeah. they finish their education and their degrees. Okay. And uh, we met some fantastic alumni at the British High Commission in Abuja who had done their degrees um, around Britain. I met one lady who studied public health at the University of Aberdeen. And she works over here um, in public health now. She came back straight away. And that's, I think that sort of, um, sort of feedback back to, back to people's home country. And we see that around the world. Yeah. Um, and I think people bring back with them the, the, the world view, the experience, international uh, connections and networks, yeah. and an understanding of, of, of how, to, how to get the best out of people from all around the world, and a real commitment to their home nations. Okay, let's talk figures, let's talk mm. finances right now, because uh, most times when you talk about schooling abroad, uh, in the UK specifically, most people have, just have to try and do a bit of math uh, mm. uh, savings, how much do I have? But first of all, we'll talk about um, the exhibition for today. Is it a paid event? And uh, that's just on one side. And then again, uh, does it really cost so much to school in the UK? Natasha? It's perfectly free to come and visit us today. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, everybody is very welcome to come and join in there. But, uh, but of course, it's, it, it's a paid education. It's expensive for the English parents and it's more expensive for the Nigerian parents because, of course, they have to fly them across. Mm. Uh, but there are benefits to that uh, and obviously this high networking that you can create out of that is a, is a really positive bear on that. So at the end of the day, uh, it is like a win-win situation. You uh, send your children, they get um, an education for the, from the UK and they come to Nigeria to actually share their experiences and uh, uh, in, get involved in nation building. Yeah. Okay, but uh, would you really say that uh, um, Africans uh, adapt easily uh, <laughs> in the UK system, George? <laughs> Absolutely. I think yeah. there's, you know, the, the, the Nigerian students that we welcome into our school every year are so hard-working and dedicated yeah. and outgoing and they get involved with, with being at the school for a very short period of time. Soon enough, they're showing around my prospective families, talking to them about life at the school, and speaking really from the heart yeah. about their experiences. Yeah. They get involved with sport, they get involved with drama, they're on the stage, 
um, learning musical instruments, they, they absolutely get involved with, with yeah. school life. And I think that vivacious energy that we see here in Lagos and in Abuja to really plays out in what we see in the in the students when they come to us. Okay, just to emphasize, Natasha, uh, we hear there are 22 UK principals from 22 colleges. Can you tell us about that? Sorry, say that again. 22 UK principals from 22 uh, colleges on UK and Nigeria to support this school. Yes, yeah, yeah, we have oh, we have a full range. We represent Scotland right the way through down to the south of England. Okay. And I think this is what's important is that is that that range and diversity of schools are there. Some of them are just sixth form colleges, so very focused on the A level or the IB. Mm. So concentrating on different layers of education within the system too. All right. Uh, we wish you all the best. But just before we'll let you go, I just want you to emphasize oh, yet again the venue of um, uh, this particular exhibition, what is to be expected uh, from all people who intend to participate. Natasha. I think a warm welcome, for sure. <laughs> We're at the Wheat Baker, which is um, beautifully welcoming. Um, but certainly the heads are very keen to stand and have a conversation, just to hear a little bit more about the children that are out there. But certainly some refreshments, so come and, and cool off or have a nice cup of tea. Okay, George, anything to add before we Yes, we'd love to, as I say, we'd love to meet families, parents and educational leaders um, from, from Lagos. We're at the Wheat Baker Hotel between 11 and 4 today, and it'd be fantastic to see you there. All right, thank you so much. Thank I you. have been speaking with Natasha at Dangerfield and, of course, uh, George Bud. Thank you so much for your time, and we wish you a wonderful exhibition today. Justin, thank you very much. It thank is you. indeed our pleasure. Thank you. thank you. All right, it is the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll take a quick break and we'll return with more. Don't go away. Stay with us.